Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, today's webinar is going to be focusing on uh, what's new in Dynamics 365 supply chain management. So we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be doing an overview of the latest features for Dynamics 365 supply chain management. A quick look at the agenda today. Um, so today we'll focus on the platform updates plans for 2024. What's new and changed? Uh, we'll also be um, showcasing a demo. And then at the end, to conclude, we will have a Q&A session. So without further ado, let's let me introduce our speakers today. Uh, so we have Andrew, who is a tech lead solutions architect. And as you can see on the slide there, he comes with a wealth of experience. And we've also got Peter, uh, a business uh, architect and head of ERP departments. Uh, and we're also pleased to be joined by Nastasia, who is also a consultant for Dynamics 365 and supply chain management. So um, I'm going to be handing it over to Andrew now. Andrew, the stage is yours. Thank you, John, and uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our today's session. So uh, it's only three days until the general availability of the next release Dynamics 365 supply chain management. According to the new release policy, Microsoft releases four updates over the year, and two of them are major ones. Mm, as of February 19, 2024, the maximum number of consecutive updates that can be posed is one. So uh, the next major update uh, will be released in September this year. Uh, let me go back to the upcoming update and briefly overview the changes. Uh, we highlighted about 10 improvements that are the most promising from our point of view. You can see the brief description on the current slide. Uh, let me provide more details about some of the points. <clears throat> uh, let's start with the inventory and logistic part. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, reproduce business documents that include the product bundles. In general, the product bundles feature enables business to group multiple items uh, so that they can be priced and sold together. Uh, it provides an easy way to ensure that the correct items are always sold and priced together. Uh, the product bundle feature uh, uh, has now been updated to ensure uh, that after deleting or archiving a sales order, the original sales order confirmation and invoice can still be printed. Query and manage inventory without site or warehouse info. This feature allows user to query, post software reserve and allocate inventory through the inventory visibility service, either uh, with or without specifying a site and warehouse. Previously, site and warehouse were mandatory parameters. Uh, with the new feature, the Inventory Visibility Service API now supports two options for querying or updating inventory data. First option is uh, you can specify organization ID and product ID plus other relevant inventory and tracking dimensions. The second option is uh, you can specify organization ID, product ID, site ID and warehouse ID plus other relevant inventory and tracking dimensions. The next part uh, is manufacturing and asset management. So feature number three is uh, track and trace serial and batch numbers for manufacturing. Uh, this feature allows manufacturers uh, to track and, um, and batch numbers of uh, components used in production orders and link them to serial and batch numbers of finished goods. In addition, you can generate production orders with quantities exceeding one unit. Uh, even when both components and finished products are subject to serial or batch number control. It is a, a high level review of the feature. Uh, Peter uh, will provide more details about this feature during his part of the presentation later. So uh, let me let me switch to another area. So uh, in the master planning area, uh, we have the following improvements. Uh, feature number six, uh, inherit inventory status for planned intercompany demand orders. It adds an option in master plans that allows intercompany orders to inherit inventory status from intercompany supply instead of applying a default value. 
To use this functionality, inventory statuses must be exist on both companies and be identified by inventory status ID. Uh, item substitution uh, for bill of materials and planning optimization. Uh, this feature allows you to indicate substitute items that could be used in a bill of materials whenever there isn't, there isn't enough on hand of the main item. Uh, you can indicate products uh, that could substitute the main components by priority and planning will automatically pick the one with available on-hand inventory following the priorities. Uh, use rounding for unit of measures in planning optimization. This feature uh, ensures that the rounding rule provided by the unit of measure of an item uh, is respected when replenishing, uh, replenishing through a purchase order. If the rounded quantity doesn't cover the replenishment requirements, the, uh, the rounding rule is ignored and the quantity is rounded up instead. I would like to mention that the last two features are available in the planning optimization engine only, not in the old master planning engine. Uh, in the warehouse management module, uh, we have the following improvements. Mm, feature number nine, uh, external shared warehouses with warehouse management only mode. With this feature, uh, you can use warehouse management only mode to handle a logistic operation in a legal entity that's dedicated to warehousing operations. Uh, you can then connect uh, warehouses between that legal entity and other legal entities that to do all the order and financial processing. In addition, uh, warehouse management processes can use an owner inventory dimension to track uh, which legal entity owns the inventory for items that are shared across legal entities. <clears throat> Uh, complete mixed license plates from a mobile device. Uh, with this feature, workers can receive various items uh, into a single license plate before they register and create put away work. Also, uh, the system can be configured to create work records for each re registration. Uh, in addition, the license plate receiving and put away process can be used as a single operation. Uh, inspect and process returned items more efficiently. Uh, this feature uh, makes it easier for warehouse operators to manage and review returned items and to choose how to process the return process. Uh, warehouse workers no longer need to select a disposition code immediately upon receiving a returned item. Uh, instead that, uh, they can choose to postpone the decision until after they have uh, had a chance to inspect the item. The final feature, the feature that I would like to introduce is number 10, monitor the status of failed shipment lines. This feature collects uh, shipments lines for inventory that couldn't be allocated during initial wave process processing. Uh, it adds a failed shipment lines page where you can review the lines that are, re are ready to be rewaved. A batch order uh, regularly can process uh, these lines, tries again to locate inventory for them, and add uh, the lines to a new wave if inventory is available. It was uh, the final feature uh, that I would like to introduce. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in our chat. Now I would like to turn the floor over to Nastasia. Nastasia, the stage is yours. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, as you're aware, Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management continuously improves production management processes and now provides an effective, accurate, and performant process for tracking serial and batch numbers of components and finished goods. It helps ensure that manufacturers uh, can comply with industry standards and regulations and helps uh, ensure the quality of processes such as uh, maintenance, warranty and recalls. Uh, Dynamics 365 supply chain management now enables manufacturers to track serial and batch numbers of components used in production orders and link them to serial and batch numbers of finished goods. Uh, to generate production orders with uh, quantities exceeding one unit, even when both com uh, components uh, and finished products are subject to serial or batch number control. 
and to set up serial number and batch number tracking process to seamlessly integrate with job management. Also to track serial and batch numbers both from uh, within the production floor execution interface and through the standard UI for managing production orders. Uh, these rem remarkable improvements will definitely enable manufacturers to enhance efficiency and quality control. And um, now I hand it over to Peter, who will shed light on how this functionality was implemented by the vendor in his demonstration. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you, Andrew, for a brief overview all uh, enhancements and new features in uh, Amen release. And uh, a few words about uh, the, my demo. So I will show items we will uh, work with. Uh, then we will uh, go through bills of materials for the finished good. Uh, we will process a production order in uh, UI, in, in a regular UI interface, Dynamics 365, without uh, special applications. And uh, the last one, we will track components for the finished good. We will link them with uh, uh, batch numbers and serial numbers of components exactly. So the main idea of this feature. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, and um, this is it. And so I think now you see uh, Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management uh, User Interface. And let's start with the product information management model. So we are going to release products here. I'll set a filter for my product specifically. So we will work with uh, this one as a finished good. It's a track light system. And those are few components we will uh, produce it from. So let's um, take a look for the details of the finished good. So as you may see, for tracking dimension group, there is batch and serial number, and they are financial uh, dimensions for financial accounting too. And also we have a batch number and unique serial number for these uh, products. So let's also see the BOM version for this item. As you may see, there are four components for this item. Uh, one power pack, uh, two lines uh, luminary, uh, eight magnetic contact, and two meters of uh, metal profile. So let's uh, go to production control all production orders and let's create here a new production order as an item number as i show we will choose uh, this one automatically link for bill of material and let it be two piece of uh, products So it's uh, created. The first step, as you know, it's estimation. So let's uh, estimate our uh, production order. And uh, let's check that the production bomb is the same that we just uh, saw. So for two units, uh, it will require two power pack. So everything the same, but uh, for two units. 
uh, we will skip the release uh, status because we are not talking about um, operation control here. We are talking about uh, um, finished goods. So let's uh, start our uh, production order and uh, pay attention that uh, we will post our picking list automatically. So the system will uh, automatically uh, pick uh, all components with their batch numbers and with their serial numbers. If you want to choose them manually, so you have to uh, turn off this uh, setting. So uh, during the uh, start uh, production order, uh, the picking list will be created but not uh, posted. So you can pick all uh, components you need with uh, your uh, device, with the warehouse management uh, application or something, and uh, choose the exactly batch numbers and serial numbers you need. But for our case, it's not important, so I will post it automatically. Uh, so the status is uh, started and let's take a view on a picking list. It's uh, posted as you may see. Uh, so two pieces of uh, this item, it's a power pack, uh, two lines because it has uh, different batch numbers and different serial numbers. So four pieces, another item with uh, unique serial numbers and one line uh, for this item because it's only batch number and it's uh, enough pieces on uh, this batch number. And also the metal profile, it has no batch numbers or serial numbers as you may see. So I'll open this picking list on another tab because I need it later. Log off by timeout. Okay, that's our production order. And as you may see, the next status will be report as uh, finished. Let's do it. Uh, sorry, it's a uh, you tap production order a report has finished so again as you may see this action will uh, end job automatically and uh, report production as finished so the journal for finished good will be created and uh, posted automatically again if you need to choose the special batch numbers special serial numbers or something like this you just uh, of uh, this uh, uh, checkbox and we'll uh, post it manually. So I click OK. It reported as finished, as you may see. Uh, let's open uh, this uh, journal too, because we need it as well. As you may see, those two units. And I'm going to open uh, transactions, inventory transactions here because I need these numbers, batch number and serial number for my finished good to make a link to match uh, batch number for finished good with batch numbers and serial numbers of uh, components. Again, I'm going to open one more tab, make it clear and convenient, go into production orders. So uh, the new button, it's on the production order tab and it calls track components. Go into associate finished products and components form. And uh, here is the field to use a uh, scan mode. So here you can use your scanner if you have uh, barcodes for your batch numbers, for your serial numbers, or you can uh, type it manually here. Uh, 
this buttons product or component uh, define which uh, batch number or serial number you will uh, type here for the finished good or for the component exactly so the first one is for the product that why it turned on uh, by default so i'm going to my inventory transaction let it be the first one uh, copy this uh, batch number paste it here uh, submit so and the system automatically switch uh, scan mode for component and expect that i will uh, type here or scan here batch numbers and serial numbers for components so let's do it uh, power pack uh, i'm going to my picking list and this is power pack so i'm going to use the first uh, batch number here submit and the serial number two submit. the next step i have to switch uh, the line here on components to scan uh, the next watch number and serial number i mean for the next item if i will not do it then we will have a warning that batch number or serial number is not for this item number exactly so line luminary 6001 i have uh, two serial numbers here for each unit it um it okay and next one and the last one magnetic contact as you may see there's uh, one batch number for all 16 units so i may put it i, I can put it 16 times or actually eight times but also i can uh, use this button view associations go deep to my association line and uh, make it quicker if I don't use a uh, scanner just uh, choose here the number go back switch back scan mode to the product and use another batch number Submit. actually uh, this um, finish good also tracked by serial number I I uh, haven't scanned it for the first one. I can put it later manually and also I can scan it here. I just need to switch back my scan mode to the product here. So as you may see here, those are two lines. One, I already scanned the serial number. One, this one have to be a serial number and I can put it manually as well here. Go back and now let's do the same, absolutely the same operations for the second unit. The serial number. Uh, pay attention that uh, the status change to completed because I have to track for two units and uh, I already did it for two units. For this item, it's still in progress. Meet. Meet and one and something wrong with the, the first one let's try it one more time also it's already used somewhere okay uh, and again batch number 
for the magnetic contacts. So as I told, I can scan it here as many times as I need. So all components has, uh, have a completed status now. That means we match our finished goods with our components here. Let me just change the match for one item. Yeah, as you may see now, everything you can change by uh, hands until you end your production order. Okay, eight, two, one, and the same. Eight, two, and one. So now we finished with our match process and we can end our production order because after we ended it, we cannot change our match. That's it, without any errors. And actually this is it with my demo. So it's one uh, form for matching the components. It looks uh, very easy, but actually it's very important and can solve a lot of uh, problems and reduce a lot of human errors and uh, increase uh, efficiency. Because uh, previously you have to create one production order for each one unit of your finished good. If you have to track uh, what exactly, what components exactly uh, were consumed on your finished good. So uh, stop sharing Dynamics 365 and I'm gonna open our presentation again. It's uploaded just a few seconds. And let me switch for the right uh, slide here. Yeah, this is it. Thank you. And uh, John, the stage is yours now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to Nastasia and Andrew. I can honestly say, you know, the I felt the presentation was very insightful, um, and um, yeah, it, it would re really showcase, as you know, as we clearly stated there, as, as um, you know, the guys clearly stated the enhanced efficiency, productivity, and so forth. So some key buzzwords were mentioned there in in line with the demo and how supply chain management can be very effective in your uh, environment and as an ERP system. Um, so as you will see on the screen, um, if you are interested in, you know, uh, additional resource info uh, related to uh, our webinar today on supply chain management, you can scan the QR codes. Uh, if you're also interested in engaging with our speakers today again you know with a great appreciation to our speakers you can scan the qr code and engage with them i'm sure you know some people will have some questions for you uh, after this webinar um you know considering that they will go on to their environments and start understanding a bit more uh, and also try to uh, engage on on some of the the stuff that um peter and andrew and Nastasha have gone through today as well uh, very quickly, because I know we're, we're, we're at time, I'll just uh, talk a bit about uh, Air Progression's uh, ISV solution, Cloud Green. Um, so it's really in line with what we've been discussing today in, in supply chain management and your ERP system, um, especially if you have a customized environment. Uh, Cloud Green is designed to help streamline uh, the release wave management um, for Dynamics 365. We know that there are um, there's one coming up now. Uh, the Dynamics 365 release wave. We know that there's a major one in September. So 
this is now the perfect time to really get involved in this. And again, as Peter mentioned in his demo, it's to reduce the human errors. So if there is any issues that you may find um, when you do have a customized environment, Cloud Green is there to kind of make sure to preempt a lot of what needs what could actually affect your environment, you know, due to the release wave update. So yeah, it would be useful for you to get involved in the free trial. Uh, you've got a month free trial available for Cloud Green now. So now is probably the best time to um, start getting involved in you using our ISV solution. Um, yes, we do have some upcoming webinars. We um, have one tomorrow. Um, so if you are interested in joining our webinar for tomorrow, that will focus on uh, finance and operations. So an overview similar to today, an overview of finance and operation. You can go in the chat and you can see the, uh, the link to tomorrow's webinar. So yeah, go in the chat, see the link for tomorrow's webinar if you're interested in seeing um, one that's focusing on uh, doing an overview for finance and operations. Uh, and then following that, we do have a quite a pause. Then we're back in September. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, fin uh, supply chain management overview. Uh, of course, by then we would have had the, the release wave. And then following the same sequence, the next day on the 11th, we'll also do the finance overview as well. OK, so let's get to our questions. Um, so I'm just going to quickly have a look in the chat if we have any questions. I know we're at time, but again, if anyone's got any questions, let's just quickly go through them now and hopefully we can answer your questions. Um, OK, so someone's got a question. Do you plan to send a recording? Yes, we will aim to send this recording. That's for Kelly. Uh, so Kelly's asked, hello, guys. My question is about uh, cost amount for the finished goods. If I create a production order for two units of finished goods and each unit of finished goods consumes a component with a different cost, is it correct that each unit of finished goods will have its own cost based on batch tracking for components? So, yeah, I mean, Andrew, Peter, does anyone want to jump in on that one? Kelly's question. Yeah, I can uh, comment this uh, question. Uh, question. Yeah, Kelly, thank you for your question. Actually, uh, it's very good and uh, certainly concerns uh, everyone uh, who use batch tracking and the first in, first out uh, cost model. Uh, actually, I found it intriguing as well and uh, decided to create a specific, specific test case for it. Uh, but actually, I was quite disappointed with the results. Uh, despite uh, enabling financial budget tracking for both uh, finished goods and consumer items, I received uh, a cost calculation for the finished good based on the average cost method. However, I'm not uh, giving up uh, hope as this functionality has just been introduced and it's uh, marked as a preview. Uh, even uh, Microsoft advises against using it in a production environment at this stage and I uh, highly not recommended to implement it in a production environment too. So I believe that the cost calculation feature will be further refined and it will work exactly as you expected. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And Kelly, I hope that does answer your question. Um, if there's anything else further you want to discuss, feel free to. Um, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> But if there's anything else you would like to discuss, please feel free to, you know, uh, send a, a message to us, a private message. Again, you know, as I said, you can scan the QR code. Um, this recording will be shared and we will have, uh, if you, again, if you scan the QR code, you, you can access M Progressions um, website um, where you'll find all of this, all of the recordings and information on uh, this webinar. Uh, but yeah, we will be sure to share this information with you all as well. Um, yeah, and that's it. If we don't have any other questions, because I know we're definitely at time now, we've gone over. Um, I think that is it, guys. But again, speakers, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And, you know, as I said, it was very insightful. And um, yeah, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you and thank you everyone for attention. Take care. Take care guys. Have a nice Bye. one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.